Hi, uh, I am Peter. I am a C7C8 quadriplegic, and this is the second half of our um, wrist exercises for the home hand therapy exercise routine that we are creating. Um, I realized that in the other video, I totally forgot to mention where the muscle bulk is for wrist extension, um, bringing your wrist back like that. And so basically I'm just going to review those again because it's important to know where the muscle books are to feel how the muscles are moving to make your wrist do what it needs to do. Um, if you remember correctly, wrist flexion is basically going to be that muscle right there. And you can kind of see it contracting as it goes in. Um, wrist radial deviation where you're going in like that, you're going to want to watch for that thing, and it's going to go all along the side, and basically see that contraction there. And then, um, so those two actually, those muscles actually work together a little bit. Uh, so when trying to work one, try and work the other. Um, same goes for ulnar deviation and extension. Uh, when trying to get that ulnar deviation, going to want to watch out for there's some muscles down here and some muscles up here that are going to help you get that ulnar deviation. You can kind of see them on my arm basically contracting up here and a little bit down here but the truth is most of it is up there. Um, as I said I feel it most along here in this line and so that's where the main muscle is that controls earned deviation. Um, the extension muscle, which I neglected to mention, um, is also in your arm. Um, it's easier to see in here. It's basically right there. So if ulnar deviation is this little divot here, extension is this muscle that's right next to it. And if you're going to be moving your wrist back, you're going to be seeing that muscle both right there flexing. Now, um, if you cannot see your muscles, either because they're too atrophied, or you know, you're know you a little fatter than I am because I'm way too skinny for my own good, um, the one thing that you can definitely do is try and feel for the muscle. You know, push down, because sometimes you got to push down really hard to find it, and just see if you can find the tiniest little muscle working, okay? Um, if you do not have as much movement and you're still getting like in the beginning stages of like kind of guiding your hand then you're going to need to push down a little bit harder um, just because the muscle is going to be small enough that it won't be outwardly noticeable if you're contracting it you'll have to basically push down and find it um, but it's it's not too hard to do don't worry your muscles in there it's it's still in there it's just you gotta find it um, now, the uh, other part of wrist exercises that I wanted to focus on, we've already gone over flexion, extension, um, ulnar deviation, and radial deviation. Uh, I also wanted to go over pronation and supination. Um, now, these muscles, they're, they're controlled by um, a whole bunch of muscles. Um, like your biceps, your triceps, your your even your deltoids, um, and your wrist muscles are all involved in pronation and supination, um, and so you can do it in a variety of different um, shapes. Uh, you can, if you want, I, I found easiest to tell when my wrists are pronating and supinating is when my arm is in full extension, um, basically fully out in front of me. I would show you guys, but. I'll lose my balance and I also you can't see my wrists um, so this is the best that we we have to work with um, my hand is right now in pronation and the exercise that you do for this you literally supinate it rotate that wrist okay I don't get good full supination in this arm and so I just have to try my best to get into supination get into pronation supination pronation and try and keep your arms straight the entire time it's not going to be perfect as you can see I already let my arm fall 
but it's, you know, it's you gotta work with what you have. Um, and so basically, if you want to get that pronation and supination down, uh, that will allow for you to be able to do a multitude of things, and it's just another way your wrists move. And so, basically, just do that over and over. If you find that you cannot pronate and supinate, then you are going to want to do the guiding thing again. You're going to want to basically put your hand under the one that you're trying to pronate and supinate, and you're going to want to kind of guide it palm to palm and kind of work it that way you should feel some goofy muscles down here working so do that um, I haven't even given you guys uh, like numbers and times because honestly I don't keep track I just do it all the time um, pretty much like whenever I am not doing something with my hands I'll just do my wrist exercises, do my finger exercises um, but if you want to be on a strict regimen, uh, then try doing 10 of these over and over. Switch hands, 10, um, and then do 10 wrist flexion and extensions, 10 wrist flexion and extensions, and do 10 radial deviations, 10 ulnar deviations. And by then you will have done a good 60 wrist movements and should be getting your wrist to wake up so that you can move it in all directions and even make funny cool little circles. <laughs> this hand, we're still working towards it, but the more work we do, especially with that owner deviation, against gra with gravity helping, then eventually I will be able to do it against gravity. We'll see. We'll work towards it. And uh, that concludes our videos on wrists. Uh, come back uh, next time I'm in the Easy Standard, and we will be working a little bit more on your actual fingers. So keep working, keep peeling. I want to hear any comments you have. Um, also, if you have any questions, put them in the comment section, and I'll answer to the best of my ability. Um, happy healing. Have a good time, guys.